everyone welcome back to finance rocks today i'm doing my 2021 financial review here in my money bullet journal i wanted to start off with a tracker that i haven't shown you guys yet on the channel but it's my weekly money routine tracker this is where i track how often my husband and i meet to go over our personal finances we try to meet every sunday and I have a little tip out here that has our weekly money routine checklist and there's eight items on here. Every week we review and categorize our new transactions, check bank account balances, compare actual spending versus budget or look at our annual spending totals, pay bills, review our purchase procrastination list, meal plan and or meal prep. We try to read one money article, so off of like CNBC, MSN or Google something so that way we were always improving our in, our knowledge and information of personal finance. And then I just have a reminder on here to look at any monthly tasks if it's the first or last week of the month to make sure that we do our monthly tasks. Look at this, Q1, beautiful, all the check marks. <laughs> uh, then I missed one at the end of Q2 and then kind of fell off the wagon. We did travel more this year. Um, even just like little weekend trips and stuff. And so when we travel, it's a lot harder to hit that Sunday meeting. The next page I wanted to show you guys is our cash management tracker. I'm not gonna go over this in much detail because I went over it fully in my December financial review video, but I did just wanna point out we started the year with $27,000 kind of as cash available. So that's not including our like emergency funds and ended the year with 48,000. So saved a decent amount of money. I'm happy with that increase there in cash on hand. Just the top thing we're saving for right now is our home down payment of $70,000. So that's what we have that money basically earmarked for right now. The next spread I have to share is uh, an annual budget spread. Now I don't go over this every month, so for this year, I just set an annual budget amount in total of $38,000. This was just to try to simplify things. At the end of the day, as long as we keep our spending at $38,000 and save the rest, I'm happy with that progress. Try to give us flexibility to spend the money how we want. For example, at the end of the day, as long as we hit our savings goal, I don't care if the money went to shopping or if it went to entertainment or, you know, if we decided to spend that money on our dog instead. So that's one of the ways that I try to make managing our finances easy and our budget less restrictive. So we can spend that $38,000 basically however we choose. We spend a little differently every year. Our categories do fluctuate. Our annual budget was $38,000. And now I'm gonna fill in our actuals. So food and dining, we had $7,829 of spending. That's quite a bit for our two person household. And we did that a little bit intentionally. We relaxed our food spending budget to try and support local restaurants. And because, you know, we didn't get to go out as much in 2020. So auto and transport, 1,976. Lower because I donated my car this year compared to previous years. Taxes, this is just our property taxes, $2,755. Bills and utilities, $4,472, pretty typical. Health and fitness, $2,933. That's just doctor visits, the dentist, those out-of-pocket costs. For travel, we had $4,378, a few local trips, and then we did a road trip to Oregon with our dog, which was pretty fun. Financial zero, home spending $1,126. This was mostly supplies. We stained our fence, had a little siding DIY project where we fixed a hole in our siding. And then the other categories under there are like home decor. For gifts and donations, 8,684. We increased this quite a bit this year, trying to be more generous every year is one of our ongoing goals. Shopping, $614. That includes clothes, shoes, coats, anything like that, as well as hobby shopping, hobby costs. We do have a separate category for entertainment. Entertainment was 771. Education, 148. Mostly books and then online course and one conference. Pets, 890. We do board our dogs sometimes when we travel, so that has seen an uptick in the more recent years 
Personal care, $365. That's shampoo and conditioner, nail care, all the things. Fees and charges, $350. This is mostly our tax bill. And then business services, $533. This is like stamps, printing, envelopes. So that made our total for the year $37,824, which means that we were $176 under budget. Now I was going to do the difference between our budgeted amounts and our actual, but I just decided to go in there and do our dollar amount per month instead, and then do the percent of total. So the food and dining budget was 652 per month. Like I said, that's quite a bit for two adults. And that ended up being 20.7% of our total spending. Auto and transportation ended up being $165 per month, which was 5.2%. Our tax bill, even though it's the one, well, two big payments for our property taxes, it would work out to $230 per month or 7.3% of our total budget. Bills and utilities work out to $373 per month. That's probably energy. We have electric and gas, so that works out to 11.8% of our total budget. Health and fitness came in at 244 per month, which is 7.8%. Travel, $365 per month, and that was mostly in the month of July when we did our big trip, 11.6%. Financial zero and zero carried forward. Home ended up being 94 per month, which is 3%. Gifts and donations, 724 per month, which again, we mostly paid at the end of the year, so we, that wasn't spread out, which accounts for 23% of our overall budget. Now that is just our spending. I realize when people give their charitable giving percentages, it's usually a percentage of their income, but since we don't share our income, that's the percent of our total spending. Shopping, $51 per month, which is one point six percent pretty happy with that that's nice and low entertainment sixty four dollars per month which is two percent again pretty low that's basically my husband's category for spending education twelve dollars per month 0.4 percent total so quite low there pets was seventy four dollars per month we buy dog food every other month basically and then there's vet bills and boarding for when we go on trips. Personal care, $30 per month, which is 1%. Fees and charges, $29 per month. Business services, $44 per month, or 1.4%. That means our average spending per month was $3,152. And then I just love this quote by James W. Frick. Don't tell me where your priorities are. Show me where you spend your money and I'll tell you what they are. Just as a little reminder to myself that how we spend money should be a reflection of what we value. Okay, moving on to the no spend days spread. We had 187 total no spend days. I wrote this goal down. I think this was what I the number I had set, but I didn't write that down when I started this journal, which I wish I would have because couldn't remember 100% for sure. But this is a good number. I think there was only one year where we've hit 200. Pretty good as far as controlling our spending and making sure that it is as batched as possible, batching our spending together. So our best month for no spend days was March at 23. The worst was actually September. I said on the other video that it was 11. That was incorrect. I noticed it when I was editing that the lowest was actually September uh, at nine days. I think we could be a little better about this going forward. So probably next year, I'm gonna try to do more structured no spend day challenges. Like here's the week that we're doing no spend days. Okay, the next spread I wanna go over is our spending tracker. Now I did go through and update this with the full amounts for the year. They're not gonna add up perfectly from like if you add up all 12 of these, they might not necessarily equal the total total. I have on occasion found errors in my categorizing and then corrected them after the month. So these might be slightly different and that's why I wanted to go through and write out the totals based on our mint account totals. So that way I didn't have to add things up and figure out what went where here at the end of the year. And actually, I just realized I don't need to do this because I just did the same breakdown on the budget page. So we just went over all that. 
Okay, now we're gonna jump through a big section of my bullet journal here, and we're gonna come towards the end. I added this page today. It is page specifically for financial review. So I wanted to go over this for you because I think it's good to see the different measures that you could track for your finances. Now, not all of these I track every single month and you'll see that as I go through them, but I just thought it would be good to think about, to have you guys think about what you are looking at in your finances. I feel like a lot of the times people will track like one thing or feel bad about one thing in their finances, even though they might be making huge progress across the board. So really be careful about honing in on one metric for your finances. So here are some of the different things that you can track for your finances or numbers that you want to think about setting up a system so that way you have access to this information. So first of all, transaction count. Exported all of the transactions out of my Mint account. I have my Mint account hooked up to my banking, so my checking and savings account. I have it hooked up to our credit card, our Amazon account credit card. So it's the compilation of all of our transactions throughout the year. So I went through and I found that we had 32 transfers. So that's just money moving from checking to savings, savings to an investment count, anything like that. We had 161 incoming transactions. So that would be paychecks as well as like a, the birthday check that I got from family members. So 161 incoming and then 711 outgoing transactions. So that is every time we go to the grocery store is one transaction. Every time we shop online, every transaction that we have. And so that means we had a total of 904 transactions. So I just think this is an interesting metric to track just because I know sometimes people don't believe that tracking their transactions is very important. So 904 transactions, it just reminds me why I'm glad that I have a digital system set up for tracking our expenses, tracking all of our spending. That way I can know where all of those, where all of the money is going and really keep track of it because this is too many transactions to, to keep in my head or try to remember where the money is going. So just a reminder there, okay dollar spending total. Per that last spread, I had 37,824, 37,820, I think it was actually 25. I had to round the numbers because I didn't have want to write out all the decimals on that other page, but it was $37,825 total spent. Now, if you were tracking this in your own, you'd also want to have one for income. I have one down here for dollar amount saved. So I'm gonna fill that in after the video so that way I'm capturing income and expenses and total amount saved. The next one is average savings rate as a percentage. And again, that's just capturing that amount saved as a percentage. Most financial experts recommend that you save 10 to 15% for retirement, for example. So if we know our average savings rate each month, we have a good idea of how much money we're actually saving. I think that is one of the best statistics that you can track for your finances is your savings rate. There's a really good article by Jillian Johnsrud that's called Grow the Gap, Guard the Gap. And I'll link that in the description below, just talking about how to increase your savings rate, how to increase that gap between your income and expenses. So that way you have more flexibility each month to save or invest or cover emergencies that come up. So that's average savings rate. The next one is credit score change in points. I wrote this down and then I realized, oh, I did not record this on January 1st. So actually I'm not sure what our starting credit score was. So I'm gonna actually put in this our actual current credit score. And then next year I'll be able to track the difference. This only matters to me right now because we're considering getting a mortgage for our next property. And so I've just been a little bit more attentive to our credit score than I have been over the last 12 years or whatever. Okay, number of no spend days. Like I said on the other page, I had 187 no spend days. This next one is ROI for single stocks. ROI is short for return on investment. So this is where I'm gonna track the growth on the portfolio that I have for single stocks. I mostly do it for fun and just cause I enjoy it, but I have 
a single stock portfolio that I manage myself and then I wanna keep track of it compared to markets. So for this year, I had an adjusted return of 19.55%, which means I underperformed the market, the S&P 500 this year, gained 26.9%, which is crazy. Last year I did meet beat the market in 2020, so this year last year I was over, this year I was under, but still pretty close. For single stocks, they say a lot of people lose money trading stocks, so to still be at 20%, I'm still happy with that. I don't feel too bad about losing that 6% because I consider that to be money spent on education because I'm learning about companies, learning about how to trade, as long as it's close to the market. Total dollar amount saved, like I said, I'll fill that in afterwards since we aren't public with our income. Same thing with net worth change. I'll fill that in the dollar amount. So that's how much did our net worth increase over the year in 2021. And the last one, budget percent of accuracy. I think this is a really good metric because this is going to force you to track your spending and compare it to your budget. It is really difficult to hit a budget right on the money to be like, okay, I'm going to save 200 and $12.50 and then to actually hit that exact amount. So you're basically gonna be under or over every month. So you don't wanna be too far in either direction. So just tracking how close you were to budget. Now, normally I end my videos and I ask you questions like, you know, how was your financial review for 2021? How was your finances in 2021? But I wanted today to instead ask you what about your finances in 2021 do you want to change? What do you not want to take into 2022 with you? I think it's good to, you know, ask yourself what went well. Uh, I also think it's good to identify what you don't want. And sometimes I think that can even be more helpful and motivating to think through what is not working about your finances and what you want to change going forward. And you don't necessarily have to share that in the comments below. If you'd like to, you're welcome to, and I'd be interested to hear, you know, what didn't go well for you and what you want to improve in 2022. Like I said in my last video, I think our number of no spend days could be a little higher. I set the goal to do 200 next year, and then I'd like to pay a little bit closer attention to our credit score change. And there's a few spending categories as well that I'm going to try to rein in this year, namely our office supplies, craft supplies, clothes. And then I'm going to try to be a little bit better about food and dining budget. We've gotten into the habit of eating out quite a bit. So want to rein that in a little bit as well. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I hope your finances rock. Bye guys. <music>